Hello, Matt from Drobo, and I'm going to give you a live demo of how to create an iSCSI volume on a Drobo. One of the great things about Drobo is everything is as automated as possible. So when creating a volume, it's a very simple operation. So let's say we had a new application. We now want to create another volume and then point our uh, application to that in order to utilize that volume. So let's go ahead and bring up my B1200i. As I come over here to volumes, I'm going to see all the volumes currently created on the unit. You see I have two here, but I'm going to create a new one for my use. When I click add volume, the first thing that's going to come up is it's going to ask me how am I going to utilize this volume. So one of the benefits of Beyond RAID is that we're what's called data aware. We can read all the way up to the file system level, and that allows us to do some pretty neat things like thin reclamation. Well, here it's defaulted to NTFS because I'm under Windows. If I was on OS 10, it would default to HFS+. Let's say maybe I wanted to do VMware, I wanted to do vMotion or vStorage, or alternatively, on a Windows environment, maybe I wanted to do some SQL or Exchange clustering, I could do cluster multi-host. And then last, if I wanted to do Linux or maybe something a little more custom, I could select none. I'm under Windows, so I'm going to select NTFS. On the next screen, it's going to ask me how large of a volume do I want to create. It defaults to 16 terabytes. It's important to note all Drobo volumes are thinly provisioned. So we don't actually have to have that much storage. You know, we could create up to 255 16 terabyte volumes, even though maybe we only had four terabytes of storage. That gives us the maximum flexibility to grow our data, and uh, by and far, that's what most customers do. They're going to default to 16 terabytes for all volumes, and then add or upsize drives as their data grows. Well, maybe sometimes uh, for certain applications, that doesn't make sense. So here, maybe I would limit it down to two terabytes if I was going to use something like Data Protection Manager, Time Machine, or any backup software. When you point it at a volume, it's going to consume all space assigned to it. In that case, it would just continue to grow until it exhausted all of my physical capacity. So here, maybe limit it down to two terabytes. But we can go anywhere from 50 gigabytes in size all the way up to 16 terabytes. Next, it's going to ask me to name my volume. I'm going to call it Demo Mat. And then when I hit Finish, it's going to go ahead uh, and create my volume. Actually, I have to hit Apply here. And when I hit Apply, first, it's going to go out. It's going to provision my volume. After it's done provisioning my volume, it's going to format it NTFS. And then it's available for mapping. And I map it to my host and then install my application.